go check it out, Stephen. Good evening. Welcome to the show, Basque Starfish, our language core. I am Sarah Chiu. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, first of all, let us look at the introduction uh, slides. And once again, uh, I am trying to uh, defend, you know, the women's role in the writing uh, system since ancient time. I've been traveling for the last 30 something years and more than 20 of them I have been concentrated in looking for the connection of the languages. So at the end I come to the conclusion that all languages are related, no language is isolated. So all of the uh, languages that exist now is just remnants of the original one. We all share a single core. So so uh, the idea of a family tree, you know, having everyone in different hierarchy should be changed. And I am presenting my research, you know, from a feminine point of view uh, as an Asian traveler. So uh, I think that there are certain things that I see uh, and the scholars, you know, fails to see. And the other ability that I think I have as an Asian is that I can read a pictograph in a a slightly better way because you know uh, being Chinese you know I'm very used to oracle bones and so um, here is my research this week I'm going to talk a little bit about um, air again uh, again uh, air is a lot to do with the light H sound. Uh, I'm saying H sound because it's nothing to do with the writing H itself. The writing that you know of the H alphabet uh, is something connected to a rope and a thread. You know, uh, today if I have time at the end, I will also talk a little bit about why the thing goes two direction. One is the light H, the airy sound. The other one is the heavy rope H, okay? So I will begin today's uh, slides. Okay. Um, Today, um, I will, uh, once again, you know, we are looking into a little bit uh, at the spiritual belief of the ancients. The ancient belief that uh, the soul is something like a whiff of air. So, uh, from all those reading that I have done, it seems that a long time ago, uh, since writing started, they already formed the idea of something like a cosmic soul, something very, very big, bigger than ourselves, that uh, blow out something that make creation possible. And if you look at the Bible, it is because the Spirit of God moved over the water that uh, any creation and action started. So uh, what I show you here is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph which represents an H, I mean an W. Uh, w you can look at it as a whirl shape, uh, I mean whirling around, or you can understand it as a wind. And actually um, the, all these W sound can actually mutate into the R, V or from, from from V, you, it can easily mutate into uh, the vowel sound, and the other way it can mutate is from W W to the F to V to P and B and even to the M sound, and um, you can look at it as exhale of the cosmic soul and the wind itself, and the other smaller one will be the individual soul, smaller one, and I will sh I show you this is a Chinese symbol. Hey, okay, it is air. It's Itself. and then um, a lot of the ancient system other than use the light H sound they also use the R, E, A or this vowel sound which I said again and again as a living sound if you can make all this sound that means you are living okay so by inhaling this uh, cosmic soul that we come uh, we become living okay so uh, again you know you pay attention to this even in English exhale and inhale the other part hell is a light H also and um, it actually linked directly to the um, 
aerobic higher because once you breathe in that uh, air uh, you have life higher is life and in Hebrew it would be Haim and uh, they end in different thing but if you look at the first part of the uh, sound itself they are basically identical and I also show you a Cantonese way of saying alive we say hai do. it's also a light H sound and uh, I write it out in Chinese because you know even for the northern Chinese you know they wouldn't be able to understand it this is something very very particular to the ancient uh, dialect of Cantonese when we say hai do, it means it exists and um, okay uh, again the research uh, pay a lot of attention uh, I mean since I'm Cantonese so I use Cantonese as a bass sound okay and Mandarin sound I also use it for comparative purpose and also for the mute showing you the mutation and again uh, I'll show you how the ancient uh, understand as something bestowing life to something other than the airy uh, the, than the line this is a Ugaritic somewhere near in Syria now and this is Chinese both represent send an H right there and then uh, the uh, Sumerian have uh, various writing also like uh, air lines right there and then uh, you will see that they also express air from the mouth this is uh, the word representing sound use and this is actually representing speaking um, and they use the A or E to represent speaking even in Cantonese these days when we ask somebody what are you a what are you eating that means what are you saying you know so uh, strangely we also used you know the sound as exactly like the Sumerian way of using it then the Sumerian also have this uh, interesting sound right there it is R and represent the sound of a bird and the Egyptian um, hieroglyph this is an R really a bird and then this is Chinese also R represent also a bird we all use this to represent kind of a soul because uh, the ray even and also the voucher itself is a bird of prey sometimes we use it to mean action sometimes we use it to mean the soul and then uh, this is a Chinese symbol ao, which is a um, uh, uh, bull and then uh, this is of course you know Phoenician um, ancient Hebrew too this is al Aleph Alf, Alpha, and if you turn both around, uh, it's actually become the A itself. And of course, you know the um, the bull head also used by the ancient Egyptian as the representation of the soul but the sound is a little bit different but uh, I will I have already talked about when I talk about A and the K and then uh, I want to show you also straight this is Sumerian this is also Sumerian you can understand it as the something comes out from the mouth itself like the tongue and this is a, a very important symbol showing that you know the the very uh, cosmic energy that enable life itself and then then um, this is uh, in ancient uh, Egyptian this is again the W uh, sound and then Chinese actually have something like this like a mouth you know and then uh, air coming out there we pronounce it as a one definitely for us it means the soul and then interestingly even if you look at Maori New Zealand you know the indigenous people who lived right there they also have a word called Wairua which means soul you will see that also the Y and the Ruach and and right there the Hebrew actually as the word Ruach actually means the wind and the soul and of course you know Hebrew and Arabic are very very uh, close together so uh, if I, I chase it back you know if I use very ancient Paleolithic um, Hebrew to write it it is precisely like the people's person's head with this air coming out like a person it is the soul itself so um, I want to uh, look at these two uh, interesting words you can only see them in a religious setting now uh, when uh, you go into a church when they baptize have you noticed that the priests actually blow into the the ba uh, baptismal uh, form you know as pre uh, representing God you know at the beginning the spirit of God moving above the water and also it's used um, as a exsufflation or insufflation to also like blowing the devil away and to prepare the, the baby for the Holy Spirit 
and um, if you look at that, you know, the, even the word sufflation right there, um, you have the English word so far, which actually came from the Hebrew word, and uh, they actually blow this horn, you know, as you can see, it is a whirling horn, the shape, and uh, they blow it uh, during the uh, new year time because you know it is a renewal of season mimicking God at the very beginning when they blow you know the spirit over the surface of the water and in, in terms of a two-dimensional way you can think of it as a world like this but in the actual in natural form it is a three-dimensional world form okay and then also at this time when name was given you no know, name when you name something air also coming out from your mouth uh, it it's interesting that you know when you name something that thing begins to exist so it actually become this meh and bear sound and of course now we say b something b means it its presence and its existence is already noted and you will see that this is a meh in ancient sumerian and this is actually another chinese symbol can you see how similar they are for us it is actually uh we say it uh, now the sound is Fu. Fu also um, can mean, you know, when you name something, when you call something some uh, uh, by a name. So uh, it, in ancient time, it seems that when you call something by a name, its existence becomes legitimate. So uh, underneath here, you will show the little paragraph from the Petrologia Latina. Uh, it is a lot of uh, records about all the church father did, you know, since the third century all the way to the 13th century century the book um, the, uh, has a has more than 200 volumes and then it was printed in the 19th century and you will see that there is a paragraph right there talking about the bat baptism itself and talking about the insufflation and it says that uh, by insufflation the blowing they might make the, um, the the child you know wealthy of receiving the Holy Spirit imagine you know at the very beginning when God you know in the Bible when God blow into Adam you know um, it is actually blowing directly into Adam and Adam just suck in the inhale the air and he become a living being but then why is it that you know uh, it becomes you know, like blowing the, the devil away uh, before uh, the Holy Spirit can come in. And it is very interesting that it is already on the basis that men have already occupied by this original sin as the Bible went on. And then uh, because we were occupied by that uh, dirty spirit that's why you know later on the insufflation actually uh, became a different purpose to to exercise the devil become before the holy spirit could get in very different from adam when he could receive it directly okay so uh, again i show you the chinese side hey uh, the air directly go in and then when the hay goes in the air goes in uh, the person have life you know higher and then if you look at it in a very modern sense, it is as uh, we are helping people with CPR, you know, the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You know, when you blow air into somebody, it's helping some people to, to regain their life. So it's something very, very interesting. And um, okay, I, I want to show again the whiff of air. Have you ever wondered why other than the W, the H has to exist there? Because right there is already a, a visual signal showing you that it has to do with air itself, you know, with the whiff. You know, so uh, I'll show you some uh, uh, ancient Egyptian picture. You will see the very famous uh, pharaoh, uh, Akhenaten, um, right there. And if you see that all this, uh, sun, he's a sun worshiper, right? The sun's ray coming down. Can you see that all those life signs right there only uh, holds the life sign to their nose level? Anything lower than that, they never hold the life sign. That means, uh, that shows to you very, very, obviously those unk uh, actually air itself and so you will see the unk itself and you will see the other way of the Egyptian writing ach is uh, the soul truly the soul and the ach actually um, has the h uh, in Arabic this is the alphabet h in Arabic and then uh, the Arabic actually have ruh 
right there. You will see that the bird is very clearly written there. So again and again, I keep repeating to you that uh, either you see the air or sometimes you see the bird or either you see a two horn animal. So the other writing is higher about life. The soul and the life is closely related, of course, you know. And then um, this ha right there is again, is the same bird right there. So the bird also represents the air itself. Again, I show you another picture showing you again and again. Only this uh, ankh will always appear on the nose level representing air itself. You will see that if uh, people have to breathe in to take in life. So uh, the ancient Egyptian already take advantage of that to invent a lot of uh, perfume, you know, the art of perfume. And you can see that they, they wisely use the ang shape, you know, it's actually a perfume bottle. And since you have to breathe, you might as breathe in uh, good air, right? So you will see that, you know, the history of perfume actually went side by side with our religious belief, you know, so um, the perfume new breath, you know, representing a rebirth of the human soul. Uh, you will see that uh, the ancient um, Egyptian, you know, they pay a lot of attention to the lotus flower and they present it to their God in their afterlife. And then uh, they have their incense uh, holder right there. And uh, this is of 3,000 something years ago. And uh, 1,000 years ago in China, you know, you will see that this is uh, some Dun Wong caves in China when Buddhism is in its height. You will see that after 1,500 years from Egypt to China, people are still using exactly the same thing, exactly the same idea. I cannot show you the whole picture. The picture is actually a, a bodhisattva uh, leading a human soul to heaven. You will see that the leading is uh, by incense burner, the smoking, the smoke going up there, this is heaven right there. So uh, it is the same idea that the smoke can lead people to heaven. And I will show you how close the East and the West, you know, uh, ex uh, still maintain all these ancient uh, beliefs. And this is China 1000 years ago. And this is some uh, in, uh, um, incense in the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church in the West, uh, in Christianity. And this is the uh, censor used in the Tibetan Buddhism. And this is a censor used by the uh, Japanese right there. Actually, this piece is found in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. And you will see that the censor is actually made in a lotus shape. As you know, the uh, Buddhism also pay a lot of attention to the lotus flower. Can you see all this, you know, it's actually made a big circle it's still going back to the ancient time exactly the same and um, you will see that uh, the English word hates is also in hell and also the Chinese word hey and also uh, the the, uh, the Hebrew or Semitic word uh, hawa all this with the ha sound representing the air itself the haze of the incense is also used as a divine communication again you know I use the word uh, Hebrew word ruach um, to show you, you know, uh, the uh, the soul, and then in Greek, this is also the soul. Uh, in he in Greek, you pronounce it as psyche, and of course, in English, you only pronounce it as psych. But we follow the original Greek uh, pronunciation. This is the he, but you will see that this form in this form, and I'll show you one Chinese form. The Chinese use this uh, writing right there to also. Uh, mean to tell to inform this is air coming out from the mouth especially we use this to to say uh, when you speak to God and when you report things to God we also use this word can you see all this air coming out from the mouth it appears in different uh, contexts at a different time uh, but then um, they are there are differences but uh, you should know that you know the basic thing is that they all come from the same core at a long long time ago Go. And now if you look at the sound itself, the hair and the, the Cantonese hay right there means air or vapor. And then the Chinese, uh, the Cantonese also have a word called Hong. Hong is actually, uh, I'm come from Hong Kong. Hong Kong is actually a, uh, a mute, uh, uh, I mean, a different way of pronouncing uh, the uh, Hong right now. Hong is the 
Cantonese right now. Hong is pronounced by the people who the British ran in at that time. There's a story saying that uh, the British went to Hong Kong because at that time it was a harbor for the exploitation of incense. So the British were asking the, the, the villagers right there where they were in. So the, it was given the name Hong Kong. That's why the British wrote down the name, you know. So as a mutation of the sound, you know, from time to time, it was the 18th century. Now mostly in the people in Hong Kong will pronounce it as Hong, which means incense and also fragrances. And uh, you will see that uh, when the Chinese burn the incense to God, they sometimes write down all their wishes, you know, when it burn, it becomes, you know, the written word that goes to God itself and sometimes you know uh, we make the incense into different shape look at this this is a very famous temple in Hong Kong um, different family will buy this incense you know they will burn for a long time as if they were praying to God uh, and then you will see that all this form you will, will either means the wind the air the haze and also it also sends the word up into heaven so you will see that people understand things very different and now now I'm going to show you a very complicated map and from this map you will see that all different uh, languages family as you as the linguists say now all share the same sound and you will understand why I keep saying that we all share the same core first of all you will go back to Sumerian they have all this writing right there you will see the airline and the tongue right there and the air a e all means you know the the, the way of speaking when the speaking when air comes out you know uh, when the Greek actually look at air as aira that's why you have the word air and that look at this sign when it turns around it is the two horn animal and that's why you have this aima alma atman in Sanskrit all this means so itself the air itself and this is the the bull, bull part right there let's look at the air right on the other side okay the Sumerian has this uh, meaning you know the being and the divine property that enable a cosmic activity that's enabling the existence of anything the Chinese has a similar thing it also means air coming out from the mouth and then this is Ugaritic as I said the first uh, cuneiform and in the C Syria area and this is the H sound and the Chinese Cantonese you know has the hay means air and it also can be written in this way and then you can understand it as the haze in English and then the Chinese has this and once again you see uh, air coming out from the mouth and it actually pronounces it as ho means, means uh, air coming out again or means yawning okay and and also means a, a sign you know so you will see that in Armenian there is a word like that ho god ho ho in, in Cantonese and ho god right there in Armenian and it means sign have you ever considered the English sign the H right there is actually a, a visual sign showing you uh, the, uh, the the air itself okay now I go to Punjabi this is Punjabi the ha sound can you see exactly looks like the mouth the air coming out from the mouth this is Hindi or Sanskrit this is also a ha air coming out from the mouth this is Tibet Tibetan and that also air coming out from the mouth, the ha sound, and for them it means exactly yawn and breathe and breathe, okay? And then in Maori, thousands and thousands of miles away in New Zealand, either ha or how means air, wind or breath. And in Cantonese, how also means the atmosphere, okay? And also uh, when they change the way to write not straight line, you will see that this air line right there. In Georgian, another very strange, you know, language that we said that doesn't belong to any system. You will see that their word hari also means air and you see their way of writing is also indicate to you visually that it is air and then the Arabic has Hawa you see this whirling air right there and Farsi the Persian also has Hawa right there and then the Greek uh, uh, inherited back you know this is Hava also air and then the Basque country also they said is an ancient independent isolated language look at what the 
visitors you know the haze right there is wind I really don't think it's that isolated so again um, the Hawaiian another direction Uhani is the soul and then you will see the the Greek again psyche is the soul and also the psyche and um, exhale and inhale of course in English and you even have the hymn hymn is also air coming out from the mouth to praise God and Chinese Cantonese has hymn look at this hymn and hymn you see air three lines of air coming out from the mouth itself and then it's him also means yawning and air coming out from the mouth and then you have this now it changed a little bit you know you have to understand the com combination of words and this is in hieroglyph w and the chinese also have this begin to to pronounce as w we pronounce it as one right there it means the so this is the continuation changes until this day and then we also have this is Voy. Both of them are meaning something turning, okay? Either the so or, or something turning. And when you add this one with this one, this in ancient Egyptian, Ruach become the Hebrew Ruach. So, okay, or the wind. And then um, I will show you um, the cursive Hebrew, write it like this. And it's actually become your English writing the the small uh, h okay so everything we borrow from each other no one is that ingenious everyone borrow from each other okay so uh, if you look at the chinese right there you will see the arabic also have this her the h right there for arabic so they have ruh also as the soul and then go back to maui they have the wa ruh also in this system right there meaning the soul so you see in this basque um, and also Greek, Maui, and Hebrew, uh, Arabic, Farsi, Chinese, Tibetan, and Punjabi, Hindi, and also Armani, uh, Georgian, all of them form part of the whole picture. So you will see that, you know, if you look at the picture itself, you see the air, the animal, and also the bird. They always form a triangle like that. So um, I was going to show you Alexa, you know, because, you know, uh, we are going to listen to the voice. But, uh, but I think um, today our uh, time is running out, so I will just stop right there. I was going to talk a little bit about Alexa. We like so much to give order by our voice, trying to mimic God. So, uh, but uh, I